Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, we'll have a look at the UK Met Office pressure charts, then we'll have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, the GFS ensembles, I'm going to finish up with the UK Met Office precipitation um, and temperature charts. Now over the last few days we've been hinting at um, westerly winds over the next week or so. Prior to that, if you do remember, we were seeing quite a strong signal for a cold end to November. Now, it's pretty typical during the winter months to see these sort of long-term trends sort of diminish within the model output, just suddenly to sort of reappear. And that is what we're starting to see. As you'll see in this video, we do actually have quite a decent signal now. We could be going quite cold for the end of November. Definitely isn't looking particularly westerly. The jet stream really doesn't look to be g gaining any traction. The only thing we've got to keep eye an eye out for is where the high pressure goes. Because um, in the colder runs, the high pressure heads northwards. In the less cold runs, the high pressure sits over the top of the UK. So we'll have to see what happens with that, and I'll have a look in the longer term for all the ensembles and the models. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So you can see on the latest GFS, we do have high pressure at the top of the UK, but it's got a lot of trapped cloud under it, a bit of an easterly flow, as meant there's been a few showers in the east and in the southeast, in a few spots, mainly quite light and drizzly, um, but still a little bit miserable if you caught, caught under it. But temperatures have been fairly high, they've been mod, uh, sort of mild um, for this time of year, maybe a degree or two above average, but not feeling really warm or anything. Beyond that, as we head into early next week, we start to see low pressure come in by Tuesday, Wednesday, potentially some weather fronts across Scotland, and briefly, um, some chillier air is pushing in. We could see maybe a few snow showers over the tops of the mountains with that. And then we continue with westerly winds all the way till next weekend. And then the interesting pattern starts to happen. Now, we are now sort of in the shorter range of this, in about a week's time. It's looking pretty definitive that we're going to be seeing a proper northerly wind. Now, we have been hinting at this for the last few days. It's not any shock that we've seen this northerly wind. But it does look like, quite likely now that the minus five line will spread through most of the country. Now, it's not a wintry sort of cold wind, as you can, a cold northerly wind. As you can see, it generally is under higher pressure. Maybe a few showers in the north and the far east we could be seeing. Maybe some wintriness, um, especially over hills and pot potentially even to lower levels overnight. But it's mainly under higher pressure, so it's mainly going to be a frost risk. Now, this is in the short short time frame, so it's pretty certain we're going to be seeing a pattern like this. But as we're towards day 10, this is where the interesting sort of things come across, come at, uh, come into the model output. You can see the high pressure sort of sitting over the top of the UK. But you can see heights are rising towards Greenland. Now, this GFS run is going to go very cold, but I'll show you in a minute why it may not go quite as cold um, as this. So you can see... That high pressure sort of retrogresses away from the UK back up towards Greenland where it moves from east to west, builds up towards Greenland and we plunge into a northerly wind, a wintry northerly wind with that. Under lower pressure, minus five lines spreading through the whole country, getting down to sort of minus seven, minus eight degrees at 50 HPA. Cold enough for widespread snow, really to lower levels as well. And considering how cold the air mass and widespread the air mass, even coastal areas could be seeing some wintriness with this. Beyond that, you can see this cold pool that is dropping out of Greenland. Now, very interesting to see what happens with that. That is a lobe of the tropospheric polar vortex. And you can see as that drops out, it sort of interacts with the jet stream, which is highly amplified and spins up a small feature within that very cold air and spreads minus 10 line through to many areas in the north. Very cold. And that would produce a lot of snow. Now, of course, we are talking 300 hours plus, very unlikely to verify exactly like this, but this is just one of the colder runs we are seeing at the moment. All depends on what happens with that high, how far northwards it heads towards Greenland and how long it stays there, because it stays there for a good few days on this GFS run, which allows these cold northerly winds to continue with the coldest air moving down. Beyond that, high pressure sort of sits over the top of the UK, and we stay in this very blocked pattern with a bit of an easterly flow coming in. Now, this wouldn't be incredibly wintry, maybe a few snow showers, uh, wintry showers in the east, but it would be frigid. We would really be in the freezer. Considering it's the end of November, 
even though we normally don't see particularly wintry weather towards November, simply because there isn't that much or as much cold air to the north as there would be in January or February, and because generally this time of year we do have quite strong westerly winds. This year is abnormal simply because of the longer term trends, and if you want to know more about that, go have a look at some of my winter look um, look aheads, which I, I did um, earlier this month um, and into October as well. But you can see high pressure over the top of the UK, putting in a brief easterly wind. The air mass is pretty chilly, down to minus 5 or below. But the big thing with this is there's likely to be snow on the ground from previous snowfalls. Um, daytime, uh, sort of um, daylight is going to be in short supply considering it's end of November, only a couple of weeks from the winter solstice. So getting very low um, amounts of light in the day, very low UV levels as well, low sun intensity. It's going to mean temperatures are going to be frigid. I wouldn't be surprised to be seeing widespread ice days with this, i.e. temperatures not getting above freezing in the day and getting down to minus 10, minus 20 at night in a few spots. Now, this is a very extreme run, of course, and I've said that, but this is what could happen if we get substantial blocking towards the end of November, similar to what we saw in 2010, which, if you do remember that, was brutally cold for a good few weeks. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but on this GFS run, we are seeing a similar pattern. Now, if we have a look at the GM, the GM only does go out to day 10, so we can only look um, until around the 24th, 25th of November, not into the extended range where the GFS really does go frigid um, with heavy snowfall. So if you do run through, you see, again, a lot of westerly winds over the next few days, and then the high pressure built in. As I said, this is pretty definitive within the model. It's got a bit of a, a bit more of an easterly or northeasterly wind here, so there could be a few more snow, snow showers and wintry showers with that. Um, pretty chilly easterly wind at times, especially in the far southeast corner. Now, beyond that, you can see very cold air is flooding out, the, out of the Arctic, and high pressure is building up towards Greenland. Now, if we got this high pressure up a little bit further northwards, which could happen if we did run this on another couple of days, we would be going bitterly cold. Now, this isn't as much of a direct northeast. as you can see the coldest air is sort of spreading into Scandinavia, but we're still going to see some of that very cold air spread into the UK as well, along this sort of north, um, sort of initially a northerly or northwesterly wind, veering more easterly as it heads toward around the higher pressure. So very similar pattern to the GFS, getting that high pressure up towards Greenland, and if it did hold it there and get it that far northwards, if we did run it on another day or two similar to the GFS, we would go into, into a similar pattern with very cold conditions. So if we now have a look at the e F, see how that does compare. You, I have already had a look at this, and as you'll see, this goes a little bit of a milder and drier solution. Still has the high pressure around, but as I said, it's sitting more over the top of the UK, less towards Greenland, so we're still pulling in a bit of a colder, easterly or northerly flow, but not bitterly cold and not wintry. You can see over the next few days, again, a lot of westerly winds, um, and then, as we head uh, towards the end of this run, you can see that high pressure ridges up towards Greenland. Initially, we do see that pretty chilly northerly wind. You have a look at the air mass, pretty quite a uh, pretty cold, really. And beyond that, you do see we still have that high pressure around, but it's sitting more over the top of the UK. We're still under a pretty cold air mass, but we're not getting that really cold air in from the north. That's staying towards Svalbard, Greenland and Scandinavia, not quite getting that in. So this is a, let's not say milder solution, because it isn't mild at all. It's just not as wintry um, and not as cold. It would be pretty chilly, below average temperatures, but there wouldn't be a lot of wintriness associated with it, just generally maybe frost and colder daytime temperatures. Also want to have a look briefly at what we'd be seeing in terms of the temperature deviation from this GFS run. So if we do run it back, you can see very, very cold conditions for a good week, really, in terms of the 850 HPA deviation, staying a good 4 to 6 degrees below average at all times. So very, very cold. Now, if we have a look at the UK Met Office run, which is... As I've said before, probably the best model, really, but it's not widely available um, in terms of sort of uh, in terms of its sort of longer range output and its pressure charts. Um, as you can see, in the minute we're, with our precipitation and our temperature, we only have that out to five days. But you can see we can go out to seven days on this uh, run, and you can see 
we do have westerly winds and then we see the high pressure ridging up towards greenland towards next weekend and that's where we go for that northerly wind so you can see the uk met office run the high the most highly regarded model really is going for the pattern we are seeing with the other, from the other models for sort of seven days time with that high pressure ridging up towards greenland very very interesting seeing this we could if these models did verify and if this stayed consistent over the next couple of days we could be in for a very cold end of november not saying very wintry, because as you saw by that ECMWF, it would be cold, um, but not quite as wintry as the other runs. So at this stage, it is looking pretty chilly for the end of November, but how cold and how wintry is yet to be established. Now, if we have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, which show um, these pressure charts um, very well in terms of anomalies. So if you do go a week out, um, a week out, you can see generally towards next weekend high pressure in the mid-atlantic northerly winds all of the models are going for this slightly different orientations in the high and the low which is going to slightly change the direction of the air mass which might turn it a tad cold if it's more veering northeasterly um uh, and with that high pressure a bit further northwards so very small changes within that if we go all the way out to day 10 now you can see they are pretty similar we have 30 with a high pressure ridging up towards Greenland. A bit of a northwesterly wind, so not quite as cold yet, but very similar pattern. We've got another 21 that go very cold. Low pressure to our east, tropospheric polar vortex, high pressure into the mid-Atlantic up towards Greenland, and plunging down northerly winds, which would be very, very cold. Now, if we run it all to 300 hours, so another few days, you can see, again, the majority have high pressure in the mid-Atlantic towards Greenland, northerly winds. Maybe a small low-pressure system developing within that as well, which could be a real snowmaker. You can see another run has high pressure up towards Greenland, firmly a Greenland high, and bitterly cold east to northeasterly winds. Low pressure within that would mean be very, very cold over the top of the UK. Um, and, well... We would be seeing a lot of snowfall with that intertwined with the low pressure. Very, very interesting seeing that. Um, that's very reminiscent of sort of a beast in the east, sort of um, very low heights, cold air spreading over the top of the country. It probably won't be a beast from the east simply because we don't have that much cold air to our north, but very similar in terms of reversing the zonal flow in from the northeast instead of the west. You see another 11 have high pressure sitting over the UK, very similar to what the ECMDF showing for, uh, operational one was showing, not getting up towards Greenland, um, but still pretty chilly with north and northwesterly winds. We've got another eight with low pressure centered over the top of the uk not as much blocking so more of a westerly influence so very unsettled um, and probably chilly but more of a north um, westerly wind so a little bit milder mixing in atlantic air and another six with low pressure dropping southwards high pressure to our north and that will be pulling in a pretty chilly east to northeasterly wind but a minority of runs so uh, i'll go with only six so i have to keep an eye really what happens with that that would be um pretty cold and wintry as well well um but you can all see they're going for this or at least except from um these eight here which are going for an nao minus which is still a lot of blocking around you can see they're all going for the um, sort of pink um chart which is a north atlantic ridge heading up to a greenland high which would be very very cold with northerly winds if we go right towards the end of the run 360 hours you can see it's a lot more muddled we got 14 with high pressure dropping southward still with some colder northerly winds but westerly winds are coming back in we still got another 12 which would be very cold and wintry um, including the control run with high pressure just blocking out the center of the atlantic with east to northeasterly winds we have another Evan with the atlantic opening up with flat westerlies we have another eight again with a lot of low pressure to our north westerly winds but probably would still be quite chilly with um the jet stream shifted southwards and then another six with a scandinavian high with bitterly cold easterly winds because if you think about this high pressure would have migrated eastwards and that very cold air sitting over the uk will be over central europe and we'd be pulling back that, that air very very cold so very interesting seeing this model output has very quickly flipped over the last few days 
it can flip backwards, but it is looking encouraging, uh, considering this is what we were seeing a few days ago and about a week ago for the like, right on the extended range. And it's now coming into the 10 day time frame. Uh, so we have to keep an eye on what happens with this. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, if we first go to 850 HPA temperature and precipitation, you can see over the next week or so, temperatures are around uh, or above average. It does dip briefly below average when we have a low moving through. Um, next week um but above average generally t uh, can, um the precipitation is really quite low um as we generally have higher pressure in the south of london you can see that cold front sweeping through goes from five degrees to minus five degrees potentially a few showers maybe some wintriness with that and then we do see a bit of recovery to around average as that high pressure does topple down but as it builds back up northwards you can see the very cold run starting to appear you can see the average is a good couple degrees below um, the 1981 to 2010 mean. There are still quite a few mild outliers and we'd have to get eliminate those really until we can say definitively it's going to go much colder. But you can see many, many are going around minus five or below. I'd say a good third to half of them now are getting towards um, cold, uh, cold conditions um, and precipitation signal does pick up. So lower pressure moving in could be some wintriness. If we do have a look at this new snow depth, don't take these literally, of course, but it just gives you the shows the potential um, with some of the ensembles, a good five or six showing some snow. And again, at this sort of range, they only show sort of big snow events simply because they can't uh, model to a decent enough resolution, um, sort of convection and showers, which we would see from a north or easterly flow. If we do have a look at Glasgow, we'll set the snow depth and you can see maybe a few winteriness, um, wintry showers over the next few, uh, next week or so as we do have some cold weather pushing in at times. And then again, you can see some winteriness towards the end of the run. If we have a look at the end 50 HP temperature and precipitation, you can see generally over the next week, it is quite up and down. We do see quite a cold air mass move through in a good few days time, getting down to minus five, but that is primarily in the north and it will be quite brief, only sort of 12 to 24 hours. Beyond that, you see temperatures rise to around uh, or well above average once again, and then plunge to minus five returning to around average before we do see again a couple degrees below average with the mean now around minus three or minus four degrees at 50 hpa which is really quite cold for the end of november on the extended range and you can see some very cold runs getting down to minus 10 or below but any anything minus five or lower would give snow especially in the north in scotland over higher ground as well um but any details of that, we'll, again, we'll have to look at near the time. You can see, though, there are still quite a few milder runs, and we can't omit them yet. We'd have to see those really diminish um, over the next few days uh, before we can definitively say it's going to be going much colder. But at this stage, it's just looking like... Um, a decent scenario um sort of as you saw by those eastern wf ensembles a good sort of 30 or 40 percent now are going for one of these very cold um sort of patterns so we'll have to keep an eye really want on what happens if we finally have a look at the uk met office run um have a look at the next five days you can see generally over the next few days um or next few hours um this evening maybe a few showers in the east and weather front moving into the north, light patchy rain, maybe heavy uh, bursts at times, but very cloudy overall. Beyond that, through Monday afternoon, quite cloudy, a few patches of rain around. And then into Tuesday, we see heavier rain pushing in, maybe some snow over the highest ground. Um, but it sort of really disintegrates as it heads into the uh, higher pressure. Snow showers across the north once again, um, and could be... Some accumulations potentially over the highest ground, which isn't too unusual for the middle of November, just showers of chariot in the north, and then more heavier rain pushing in. But the south is looking very, very dry, but pretty cloudy um, with the cloud getting trapped under the higher pressure in the south. You can see today temperatures got up to around 12, 13 degrees, so not really mild, but not really cold at all. If we do go to Monday afternoon, you can see temperatures are going to get up to maybe 11, 12 degrees once again, maybe only 6 or 7 degrees across Scotland. For Tuesday, we're going to see temperatures potentially around 11, 12 degrees once again in the south, but much colder in the north. We have that colder air mass, maybe only um, one or two degrees overnight, and sort of in the day of Wednesday, only three or four degrees, whereas it's nine, 10, 11 degrees in the south. Now, finally, if we do head through to, through to Thursday, you can see temperatures 13, 14 degrees with a much milder air mass pushing in from the west. But if we could have a look over sort of into next weekend and the week beyond, I'm sure we'd be seeing these temperatures plummet, um, especially next weekend as it does look like we have a 
very, very high chance now. Um, almost a definite chance of seeing this cold northerly wind pushing in with the air mass getting down to minus 5, which would most likely give temperatures around freezing or below overnight um, and could potentially uh, give temperatures in the day only around 5 or 6 degrees for many areas. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you again for another video soon.